You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Calling all new school counselors. If you're an intern, just graduated, or recently hired, this is for you. I have a brand new free training series for you called New School Counselor Boot Camp. In this five-part training, we'll be covering how to make the most of your internship, rocking the interview process, how to prepare your office, setting up for a successful and stress-free school year, and your first 30, 60, and 90-day to-do list. Summer is the perfect time to get started, so go to stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash bootcamp to sign up. Hey there, thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. So like I mentioned the last week, um, in last week's episode and today's episode, I'm giving you kind of a sneak preview of boot camp, but New Counselor Boot Camp is designed for those recent grads, interns, or new school counselors, new hires. But I know the podcast listeners come from all backgrounds. We have people who have, are brand new to the profession, but also people who've been doing it for 20 years. So I wanted to share on the podcast something that's applicable for everyone, regardless of what stage of counseling you are in. So this is a 30, 60, and 90 day plan to start your school counseling year off right. So I'm going to play this part of boot camp for you. Please be sure to download the PDF. I have a 30, 60, 90 day PDF guide for you. It's a checklist so you can check off and make sure that you're doing all of these um, tasks and tools that I'm sharing in your first 30, 60, and 90 days as a school counselor. So go to the show notes to download your 30, 60, 90 day checklist. And please share your checklist with us on social at Bright Futures Counseling. That's our Instagram handle. Um, Throw a picture up of your checklist and tag us. Show us how you're making progress. We would just love to see what you're doing during those first 30, 60, and 90 days. So go to the show notes. Be sure to download that PDF. And I look forward to seeing how it's going. This is your 30, 60, and 90 day plan as a new school counselor. So your first year as a school counselor can be intimidating, but having a plan in place can help reduce the overwhelm. Use this roadmap to navigate your first 30, 60, and 90 days as a school counselor. So first, a little about me. In my most recent position, I came in to zero program and I got it up and running in no time using this easy to implement 30, 60, 90 day plan. When you follow these guidelines, every year will get easier. So having a general outline of what to implement during your first 90 days is a total game changer. So let's break it down. In your first 30 days, you want to identify a need and show face. 60 days in, form a plan and get your system set up. And by 90 days, you'll be implementing services and analyzing data. So during your first 30 days, you're identifying a need and showing face. The first way you can do this is to conduct a needs assessment. This is a great way to assess the needs of your student population. Send a few questions out to teachers and staff to assess student needs and determine which topics to base your small groups and SEL class lessons around. You can use Google Forms to create a quick questionnaire. Next, meet with your principal. So meet with your admin to discuss your expectations and role as the school counselor. Remember, it's never too early to start advocating for your position. You can even bring this 30, 60, and 90 day plan to the meeting as a discussion guide. If you're able to contact the previous counselor, this too can be helpful. They can provide you with a wealth of information about previous students, programs they implemented, etc. Just be sure to take it with a grain of salt and get to know the students yourself rather than judge them based on what the previous counselor shares. Next up, introduce yourself to students and staff using a Meet the Counselor lesson. Presenting a Meet the Counselor lesson achieves three things. First, it advocates for your role as a school counselor, so it's very clear what duties you are and are not supposed to do. Second, it helps all students and staff get to know you in a fun, positive way. This sets a good foundation with students instead of the first time that they meet you is during a crisis. And third, it shows the students how the monthly counseling lessons will look. You can make a fun game show out of this to make the content engaging. Next, attend or host a back to school night. So if your school has a back to school night or an open house, set up a counseling table. You can explain your program, 
what preventative services you'll be offering, and introduce yourself to parents. So this is a great way to share what the role of the school counselor is, further advocating for your position. And if your school doesn't have one, consider hosting your own. And then you'll want to establish a referral process. So you'll determine which students to see based on referrals from teachers, parents, or possibly even the students themselves. So you'll want to create referral forms and you can clearly communicate how people can make referrals. This is so important. So communicate where they can make a referral, um, whether it's a digital form on your website or a paper-based system. Then you'll want to map out your SEL class lessons. So in your first 30 days, you want to figure out if your school has a curriculum and what you're going to use to teach the lessons. Determine how often you'll be teaching the lessons, which topics you'll cover, and when you will teach each topic. And now for the fun part, decorate your office. The work you do as a school counselor is so valuable, and while decorating your school counseling office is definitely not a top priority, it is a fun, simple way to make students feel welcome and accepted. So go ahead, have fun with it, and decorate away. Now let's move into those 60 days. After you do the task from your 30-day plan, this is where you'll be forming a more clear plan and setting up systems. So remember, you want to create a proactive and preventative comprehensive school counseling program. And one way to do that is to establish your counseling caseload. So in addition to collecting those parent, teacher, and student referrals, try the following methods when forming your caseload to ensure that no students slip through the cracks. So you can meet with your admin to discuss high needs students, email teachers and ask directly which students they think would benefit from counseling, and compile a check-in list of students who were seen last year. So you can then organize all of this information using a caseload spreadsheet. Next, you'll want to schedule class lessons. So remember in your first 30 days, you were setting out a general plan for your SEL le lessons on what was going to be taught and when, but now you will be scheduling them. So again, I love to use that system of teacher signups, those tech tools such as Google Sheets, Google Calendar, and Calendly. So that initial setup can be a little time consuming. That's what you'll be doing during this time, but it's totally going to save you time throughout the school year as you'll already have a clear schedule. Now the alternative is that perhaps you're part of a specials rotation and you don't get to select your schedule. Um, this can be a little frustrating, but it is easier when it comes to scheduling. So you want to find out that information as well. Then you can prepare your data collection tools. So you want to determine in your first 60 days how you will be collecting pre and post counseling services data so you can later measure your program's effectiveness and advocate for your position. Then you'll want to start planning your small group curriculum. So figure out which groups you plan on leading based on the referrals you've received. Ask your school to purchase a curriculum for you to use, work with what you have, or create your own. And finally, you want to organize any school-wide activities you plan on implementing. So first decide if you're going to help organize any school-wide activities. So these initiatives can be a lot of fun, but they do require some planning. So for example, a bullying prevention fun run is best done in October, which is bullying prevention month. So you'll want to sit down with your calendar and figure out which school-wide activities you plan on implementing and when. Then you're into your third month, your 90 day stretch. This is where the rubber meets the road and you're starting to implement those services and analyze data. So you wanna cover those three tiers. You wanna teach the SEL class lessons. So now that you've planned and scheduled those class lessons, it's time to start teaching them. Then facilitate small groups. So you've selected your curriculum, you've received referrals, and now you get to start group counseling. This is my favorite part of the job and I think you're going to love it too. And in that third tier, meet with individual students. So like your small groups, you've already received referrals and you've scheduled your students. So it's time for boots on the ground intervention. And be sure to conduct those pre-counseling self-assessments. So self-assessments are a simple way to measure your program's effectiveness. Now, during the beginning of each group and individual session, ask students to fill out the pre-counseling self-assessment on the topic that you're going to work on with them. Later, during their last session, you'll have them complete the same self-assessment. You'll then compare the results to see where progress has been made. Super simple. 
and send out behavior surveys. So behavior progress monitoring surveys have a long name, but they are really quite simple. You send these surveys out to parents and teachers now before services have started. That way they can rate how their child or student is doing. Just like the self-assessments, you'll send them again after counseling services have ended. You can also send one mid-services to ensure your counseling methods are on the right track if you want to. You will then use this feedback to adjust and tweak your program to best serve student needs. So now that you have a three-month plan to get started, you can stress less and focus on helping as many students as possible. You've got this. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to grab that PDF checklist, and please tag us at Bright Futures Counseling. I can't wait to see how your school year starts. All right, talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.